Hey guys, welcome to the channel, Mr. Reef Buster. I'm your host, Monty. Welcome to 2020. This is the first video of the year. So I just wanted to wish all of you guys a happy new year. Hopefully you had a good holiday with your family, friends, uh, and with your fish tanks and your reef tanks. So I hope you had a good 2019, uh, successful and prosperous 2019, and look forward to the 2020 season of fish keeping. And this being the first video of the year, I just wanted to give you guys a recap as to what's going to be happening going forward with this tank right behind me, my nano reef, and what's going to be happening with my other tank. So we're just going to go over my goals for the year. So what I, you know, basically what I look to get out of 2020, what goals I want to accomplish, and the things that I plan on doing as far as reef keeping goes. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys a quick recap on today's video. Now, as of you know, as you can see, this is a, probably the first time I showed you guys the tank with the light on it, uh, and it's much cleaner, as you can see. Uh, the clowns are doing fantastic. Uh, the big one kind of still bullies the little guy around, but you know, it comes with the territory. I'm sure they're gonna get used to each other after a couple of weeks or months, but you know, um, but I'm giving them time to acclimate with each, each other and get used to each other um, so nothing crazy has been happening since the last time I uploaded on the channel um, no, some changes did happen as far as the sum section goes um, a few changes have happened there I'm gonna go over that in a little bit with you but I realized um, that I actually never got a chance to sit down and give you guys my plan uh, the course of action that I'm going to be taking uh, with this tank um, you know since now that I've revived it and we're continuing the cycle process so I just want to take this time to lay you know lay the foundation of what's going to be happening so first just recap I started the revival process in September of last year and it took about little about a month to get the tank get all the negative all the bad stuff out of this tank from the previous setup that I had which meant a couple of water changes siphoning as much as I can the dirt the debris the detritus the dead decay get everything out of this tank the sump and the display and after that we did we did the aquascape I added the, the dry rock in the tank and then we did the cycling process and it's still going on but the initial cycling process happened for about a month four to five weeks and then we added the fishes and now what we're doing is what I'm doing is I'm still cycling this tank and this is a different type of cycle this is not the cycle you do to add livestock or fishes so technically we can add corals and stuff in here um, and we might be okay with it but that's what I did when it went with my previous setup and I ran into the algae problem so I'm being very skeptical right now to add any corals to this tank and part of the reason why is that if I add corals I'm gonna have to turn the lights on and I don't want to turn the lights on in this tank for the next four months now that I added fish in it. So I want to keep the tank running as is with the fishes I have. <coughs> Sorry about that. The fishes I have for the next four months with no lights on. The reason the lights are on because is we're doing a video. Otherwise the lights would be off right now. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys something other than my face to look at while, while I'm talking. So that's the only thing the light is on. And actually I turn the light on every day for 10 minutes. Every day for 10 minutes before I go to bed, I turn on the lights, I turn off the flow so I can feed the fishes. That's the only time the lights are turned on. Even when I do, they're blue like this. I don't turn on the whites or anything. It's just strictly blues and it's only on for 10 minutes just so the part so I can feed them because when the lights are off these two guys 
and they hide inside the caves. They so the big guy likes to be under this cave here over here, and the small guy likes to be here in this cave. So apparently they're not living together yet, so they're in that boyfriend girlfriend situation. You know, he lives in his place, she lives in hers. It's kind of like that. They're not bonded pairs yet, so they like to live alone. And the lights are off. That's all they do. They just stay inside the cave and just do cave stuff. When I turn the lights on every night before I go to sleep and I turn the flow off, well, not the return, not the return um, pump, just the, the power head that I have. When I turn that off, they know it's feeding time for the next 10 minutes. So I give them a little bit of pellets, a couple of pellets, feed them, give them 10 minutes, and I have the pump on auto on after 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, the pump starts on. And before I go to bed, I turn the lights off. So the light stays up for like 10, 15 minutes. That's it. And that's the way I want to keep it for the next two months or so. Because it's been two months already. So for the next two months, or two months, two months left, I want to keep the lights off. Let the tech mature a little bit more. Let the, let the biological uh, filtration, the bacteria to populate properly. I want to add, I want to... I dosed, I dosed bacteria when I first started cycling the tank before I added the fishes, but I want to keep dosing more bacteria in the next two months, and I start add cocoa pods and all the other critters that I need, not 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 uh, invertebrates. Those are gonna be after I turn the lights on. Now I'll tell you, and that's the thing. You don't want to add invertebrates while you're in this process because there's no algae for them to eat. So if you add invertebrates right now. They're gonna die. They're gonna starve to death. So you don't need invertebrates during this process. We're gonna need it right after I start turning the lights on. And even when I do turn the lights on, it's not gonna be like six, seven hours of lights. No, I'm gonna slowly ramp up the timing and the intensity of the lights as I, as, you know, as I see how the tank reacts. So at that point, so I'm gonna, like I mentioned, when I added the two, the clowns, there was, there was gonna be another fish in this tank, probably a tang, a uh, bristle tooth tang I mentioned. So that's gonna happen still. I'm still gonna add a tang in here, even though everyone's gonna say, don't do it. I have a backup because by the time the tang outgrows this tank, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, my 45 gallon is gonna be ready. Yes, the 45 gallon isn't isn't big enough for a tank either, but it's still definitely bigger than this. And I've had and I've successfully kept multiple tanks in my 45 gallon. If you go to my previous videos, my old videos, when the 45 tank was up and running, you'll see I had a yellow tank. I had the per, I had the um, the hippo tank. They were fine. I even had a sailfin tank. I had three tanks in that in that 45 gallon at one point, even though I shouldn't have. But I did. What happened to those fishes? That's an afterthought. So let's not talk about that. But no, to be honest, really honestly, um, it's good to have a hundred gallon tank to keep a tang because then it will it'll, it'll have the room to swim around and grow to its potential. But if you have a 45, 50, or even a nano tank, you know, you could keep it and to an extent, even though you shouldn't. It's just gonna stop the tank's growth. And he and depends and depends on the species. Some tanks will still grow, even if you keep them in a small tank, a small area. Then you have to move them eventually. So that's part of the reason I'm not gonna put a hippo tank in here, even though I want to so badly put a hippo tank. But Hippo Tang, he is gonna outgrow this tank. He's not gonna care. This is a nano and he should contain to his size. He will keep growing, get fat, and then I'm gonna have to move him. That he might, he'll, I mean, eventually, I might put Hippo Tang in the 45 because that's, the, that's gonna be in the family room. Everybody wants a Hippo Tang. I'll think about it. Because the last Hippo Tang I had on the previous version of the 45 gal, the original setup, he, la he outlasted all the other fishes on, my, on that tank. And he was, he was the oldest fish I had. So he was really hardy. Hippo tanks are hardy. Tanks in general are hardy. Most of them. So that's in the future, but I don't want to put a hippo tank in here. I don't. Because um, hippo tanks, um, 
are they're good to beautiful to look at because they remind you of Dory, but in reality, they are lazy. At least mine was lazy, the one I had before. So my previous hippo tang, he got so lazy he would not graze on the rocks and eat the algae. He would not graze on the you know on the glass and pick up the algae that's growing on it. He would wait for me to feed the tank or give him nori. So he was super lazy. Now the yellow tang I had on the other tank, he was good. He would nibble at all the algae. He was he was a hard worker. But the hippo tang, he got lazy. He was he realized he's the star of the show. He was the prettiest fish on that tank. So he's like he can do whatever the hell he wants. He doesn't have to graze on the rocks. And most hippo tanks do that actually. They will. They're kind of lazy eaters uh, as far as grazers. They'll eat. They just won't graze proactively a lot. So that's why I'm gonna put a bristle to tank because they are efficient algae eaters. They will proactively go after your rocks and try to eat all the algae you can. So that's why I'm gonna put a bristle to tank in here. Either that or a yellow eye coal tank. So it's either either one of those. They're gonna be tiny tiny ones. Put them in here. Mm, I'm gonna keep them in here for I'm gonna say about six to eight months. See how they do. See how how much growth they're having. And by then, my 45 gallon hopefully is gonna be up and ready, so I can start adding fishes. Then I'll move him to the big the the bigger tank upstairs. So that's the plan as far as um, fishes go. Now, as far as the lights, see. The lights that are on this thing right now, you know, these are my Chinese LEDs. When I'm ready to turn the lights on on this tank and start introducing corals, this light will not be here anymore. I'm going to be replacing with a better quality, an official reef light. What that light is, I'll leave it for a future video. Even though I bought it already, I bought it on Black Friday because... It was, it was cheaper, so I bought it, and it's still in the box. I'm not gonna open it yet when I'm ready to swap the lights out when it's four months. We're gonna do an unboxing on it. I'll do my quick impression, and then I'll install that light. But for now, this is just the light. Just, you know, I just turn it off for 10 minutes a day. So I don't need it. I don't need to use that light yet. So I'm saving that when I'm ready. So that's, that's that, as far as lighting goes. Four months later, the lights are gonna turn on, we're gonna see how it does. So during that time, I'm trying to get the bacteria population in this tank stocked. So when the lights are on full time, the bacteria can out, outgrow, not outgrow, like out battle the phosphates or the, you know, all the other nutrients, so they can eat all those nutrients up. So algae is not able to grow. So I'm hoping my back so I can get my bacteria population up so they can out, you know, outfight the algae problem that I'm, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have eventually, you know, every tank's gonna have an algae problem. There's a rare occasion a tank that doesn't have an algae problem, but I'm trying to minimize it this time around because the, the reason the, the first version of this tank was a failure because of the algae issues that I ran into. So I rushed that project and look how it ended up. Look, you know, that's where we are here now, We're trying to rebuild, you know, revive this thing. And so I'm trying to prevent that this time around. So be more patient. I'm um, not going crazy buying corals. Um, I'm hoping Reef of Palooza is in June. Well, in New York, it's gonna be in June. It's gonna be in Jersey on June 23rd. And I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna spend a lot of money there. I already know it. I'm just hoping my tank is ready. It should be ready by June to start taking corals in. So that's that's the that's the game plan, and that's why I started the revival process of this tank last year in September. So I give myself plenty of time to slowly and properly go through the motions of reviving the tank, cycling the tank, and getting it ready for corals. So this time, I'm giving myself enough time. So this is January, we have six months to establish this tank properly, get it ready for the corals. And only thing, I'm not gonna, only thing that I'm gonna add on this tank before I go to Reef of Palooza 2020 is gonna be a bubble tip anemone. 
And a lot of you guys are gonna also say, don't put a bubble tip in there many in a nano tank. It's not they're not good. I know. But I want I have I want to put a bubble tip in there. Now, I have a backup. If he outgrows this tank, I can move him to my other tank. I have a backup plan. But if you don't have a backup plan, if you this is if this is your only tank, I wouldn't recommend putting a bubble tip in them any in it either, or any sort of tang on it either. But I have a backup, so that's why I can do it and get away with it. But if you this is if a nano tank is your only tank, stick to the books. Do not add any tangs in your nano tank or anemones for general. Even though it's as cool as they are. I mean, you could. I mean, other people who are doing it successfully, yes. But they've been in the hobby for a long time. They know a lot of stuff that you may not know. So if you want to do it, do it. Don't start off with an anemone on a, on a nano cube, you know? Or a nano reef tank. Don't make that your first, couple, first 10 corals. Wait a year, add corals, see how you do, and then you might think about putting an anemone if you really, really, really want to do it. But I'm gonna do it as my first coral or livestock, as far as corals go, even though it's not a coral. Uh, because after I add the bubble tip in here, he's gonna move around. He's gonna move around a couple of times and find a spot. I'm gonna put him in one spot, and then he's gonna move. And then he's gonna move, and he's gonna move, and then he'll finally, hopefully, find a spot that he likes and he will stay there and that's what I want to do because if I add him later there's gonna be other corals in the tank he's gonna kill them he's gonna sting them so I want I'm gonna give him the first preference to pick a spot so I'm gonna put him first let him do his thing finally when he's ready to settle down then I'm gonna add the other corals the ones that can't move they're gonna be where I put them. So I'm gonna give him the whole blank slate to do whatever he wants for a month or two. Cause I'm probably gonna, yeah, I'm gonna add him probably in April or March. I'm gonna add him on the tank. Yeah, yeah, March. I'm gonna turn the end of March. I'm gonna add him and then let the let the clowns get used to him. Let him get used to the tank, and once everybody's all happy and figure out where they're supposed to be come to reef palooza and that's when i'm going to start getting the corals that i want to put in this tank so that's the long-term plan for this tank now i told you guys in the beginning that i was going to show you guys the changes that we did in the sump area now i'm going to tell you what changes we did we did so I fixed the light light situation in the refugium area. I added an ATO, which was which was way overdue. So I got an ATO. I got the LED light on it because I before I had the fluorescent lights, so it's a temporary fix. I put got the LED the grow light on it, and I'll show you guys in a moment. Only thing left to do is just to add the um, the two little fishies, um, um, the Fosban reactor. That's the only thing that I haven't uh, hooked up yet, but I don't have a phosphate issue right now yet. Um, I'm probably going to hook it up a month before I start turning the lights on. So it has a time to, you know, get 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 your get running properly. So when I turn the lights on, it, they can it can do its stuff of, you know, getting rid of the phosphates and all. So that's going to be month or two down the road but but for now let me just show you guys in the sump area the way it's looking um so i did clean the sump area when i did the last water change um and yeah i cleaned up the sump there's still some leftover debris, debris from the previous version of the sump which was still, you know, lingering around. So I got rid of those, finally, siphoned them out. And yeah, so let's go down there. Well, let me show you guys the fishes a little closer. Now that we have the lights on and the glass is not so dirty. Come. Now here we are looking at the tank for the first time since I added the fishes. 
and I wanted to show you guys the fishes in a blue light with a much cleaner tank so you guys have an idea as to how beautiful they are um, now they've been in the tank for about a month and so far they're doing pretty well let me get a close up hopefully I can focus and show you guys how beautiful this little guy is the coloration is beautiful I love it and I'm hoping I know that those colors are gonna change as he gets bigger it's not gonna be more all white it's gonna be like the female here the big female as she's got the maroon stripes going through the white so much better the colors gonna get better on the smaller guy but let me feed these guys let me get some a uh, little bit of pellets so I can feed them and you guys see them in action eating and <coughs> we'll talk about the rest of the system and the setup so I'm just grabbing some food right now and grab a little pinch here and there we go so they know what time it is it's feeding time uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna turn off the power head this way I limit the water flow in the display this way the pellets stay in the top portion longer so the fishes have some time to eat so now that the power head is off, it will be turning on automatically after 10 minutes. I don't have to worry about it. It's in his feed mode. Um, and as you can see, they're loving the food. They're, they're eating. And let me talk about the tank while, we're, you know, while they're doing that. So temperature-wise, we're at 78 right now. Let me show you. We got a little bit of uh, diatom happening. And that's the Chinese light that's going to be going away like we talked about in two months or so. And the diatom bloom is happening right over here. And it's only happening in this area, which is odd because that's where the flow of most is. As you can see, the power head is right behind it. But other than that, everything else looks good. Let's go down to the sump and let me show you guys what we have done in the sump so far. So let me get this out of the way. Let me show you guys the protein skimmer first. As you can see, it's running, bubbling up. I can empty that collection cup. The Fuge, the Kato is doing pretty well and almost killed it actually, we'll talk about that in a second. But let me show you guys the grow light that I'm using, got this from Amazon for $25, it's got the blue and the red spectrum which is going to promote um, plant growth, algae growth in this matter. And so what happened with the Fuge was that when I was running those fluorescent lights, I had them running 24-7. And I started to see white coloration on the fuge as if they were dying, the Kato as if they were dying. And I spoke to Mark in one of his live streams, uh, Milo's Reef, and he said, I think you're killing your, your Kato's by running the lights 24-7. You're not supposed to do that. So, and that kind of rang a bell in my head. I'm like, hold on, man, maybe he's right. So now, these lights are only on, going on for six hours a day. And they're only on at nighttime at this time for two hours. At this time, because this is when I feed the fish, and this is when I'm home. This is where I can see the status of the the Kato and the Fuge at the, at the night, because I'm not home and the, during the daytime. So, with that being said, let's get to the the sock. So the reason the sock is there because, as I said recently, I cleaned the sump area to get some dirt and debris out of there because it was left over from the previous sump, which I was not able to clean up completely. So now I, that I siphoned most of it out, and, and they were still floating around in the water columns, and I wanted them to not be able to enter back into the sump. That's why I got the sock there, and, you know, the sock is going to collect everything. Now here is the pump from Tunzi Oscillator Nano, the top ATO pump, and it goes from there all the way to the return chamber. That's where the float switch is, right before the return chamber, actually, in the bubble trap right there and there's the, the feeder tube where the RO water comes out once the water level drops and with that being said that's just it guys let's get back up top and we'll finish up the video all right so now that we're back up top uh, so let's just finish up the video so as you guys saw the refugium the sump area it's ready still got one or two things I have to take care of before it's fully ready but the important stuff is up and running. The ATO is up and running. The fuge light is on. <clears throat> Everything to maintain the tank's stability is up and running. And that was the main purpose of, you know, everything. And 
Yeah, as you can see right now, it's just a waiting game. You know, we just have to wait two more months with the lights off and be patient. And hopefully, when we're ready to turn the lights on full time, we're not gonna run into any algae issues or any other type of nuisance algae issues. And you know, lately I've been seeing a lot of people setting up these tanks and adding corals the first day, first week, first month. And I hope they have success. And I've done it in the past, but I didn't have success. So that's why I'm not doing it. You know, as much as I want to add corals right now, and I probably could and get away with it, but I don't want to take that risk. So I'm gonna take it easy, take it slow this time, you know, this time and see how it goes. I tried fast and furious. Look, look how that turned out. So let's go slow and steady this time and see what happens. And you know, and you guys, hopefully you guys will tag along in the journey and see the results with me you know together we'll see the results together see how this tank turns out hopefully for good and so that's just that's pretty much it you know as far as what I want to accomplish with this tank for the next six months or so and obviously hopefully once we add the corals depending on you know how the water perimeters are after adding the corals we might add some new stuff Equipments, maybe dosing pumps along the way, depending on the need. You know, everything is going to be added to this tank on a need basis. Nothing because we want to or it's cool. Everything's going to have a purpose behind it. You know, I don't like to add stuff because everybody else has it. You know, they probably have it because they have a need for it. If you don't have a need for something, don't add it to your tank. Okay, so you save money, and you know, one less thing that could go wrong. You know, the more you add, the probability gets higher of that thing malfunctioning or making things worse, you know. So only add things you need. Don't do it for fashion. Do it for necessity. So that's what we're going to do. And as far as the 45-gallon goes, let's talk about that a little bit. So at this point, um, I am waiting for my water mixing station to be complete so let me explain why after I shut you know after both tanks crashed and I was out of the game for about a year my water drums that I was making the waters in they kind of caught a crack started leaking water and I never bothered to fix it so now that I'm back at it and I need water so I ordered another drum for mixing salt water and I patched up the original drum that I had that I was using for RO making RO water but that's not gonna hold for long so that's why I ordered another tank like an official tank to store the fresh water that I make from my RDI system this way I can have a proper mixing station so technically the mixing station is not ready I need to be right now I can mix about 10 gallons of salt water at a time which is okay for this tank but when I'm ready to you know tackle the 45 gallon the revival of the 45 gallon I'm gonna need a lot of salt water so I need to be able to mix 50 gallons about <coughs> 50 gallons of salt water at a time so that's what I'm waiting for. That's the only reason we haven't tackled the 45 gallon um, the breeder upstairs yet, because I'm waiting for my um, the drum, you know, the containers that I ordered to come in, so I can set up my um, water mixing station, get start fil you know, filtering the water and mixing salt water, getting it ready, so I can start taking care of the 45 gallon. That's gonna be next. Hopefully the tank should be here in the next two three days maybe next week but I'm not gonna rush um, that tank will be just like this slow and steady I'm gonna take it easy because that one is much bigger more volume we're gonna work with the sump is bigger um, but I'll walk you guys you guys will see everything you'll see the way the tank looks before I start the revival process and we'll, we'll go through it together you know so if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet please do and hit the bell so you know when I upload new videos and have your YouTube notifications on you have to have both on apparently to be notified 
So if you haven't done that, do that. And for those of you who have subscribed, you know, thank you guys for continuing your uh, support. I appreciate it. Um, I know it's not a lot. 300 is not a lot, but it's a lot for me, and I appreciate all, each and every one of you guys. Um, and if you have any suggestions, put it in the comment section below. You know, things you like me to do or talk about. If you have a topic you want me to talk about, and if I think I have adequate knowledge of that topic, I will make a video about it. But if I don't, I'm still going to help you. I'm going to steer you to the right direction to the person who does know. So at least we can help each other that way. So with that being said, we're going to end the video today. You know, it's been a long video. I blabbered on for longer than I should have. But thank you for being patient. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care and happy reefing.